All right, guys, welcome back. So I've replaced the aim offset with the universal aim offset. Uh, there are some drawbacks to using a universal aim offset, for example, uh, this right here. So I don't have a custom aim offset. So when he's looking down, he may be uh, sticking his gun inside of his leg. So that is one drawback. Uh, I have fixed the wrapping issue, as you can see, so that problem is fixed now. Even though I'm using a universal aim offset, you'll notice that the accuracy is still uh, about the same. It may even be better because I added a 45 degree to the aim offset pitch, uh, so the aim offset uh, aim up and the aim offset aim down has a 45 uh, degree pose in there now uh, to fill in that gap between the 0 and 90. So it may be slightly better, more accurate now. As before, it, it would get somewhat inaccurate when aiming around 45 degrees or slightly up. Uh, now, I do have the recoil and the breathing added over the top of it. As you can see, his hands are moving up and down. So another thing that I did also as well is I added a, an upper body layering overlay. So to the overlay, the d dynamic additive overlay one. So this is the DAO right here. There may be some issues uh, still remaining in the copy motion, but I did bring whatever I did over here on the dynamic additive overlay one, I brought it over to the copy motion. Uh, the copy motion is, uh, I would consider experimental because um, I just haven't put a lot of time into that one and it's still fairly new, so. But you'll see that even with two hands or with one hand, uh, you'll see his hand does go uh, back a little when he's or maybe it goes forward a little when he's aiming down and back a little when he's aiming up. Uh, and that's just because I'm applying this to both arms. So you can uh, exclude that other arm during certain circumstances, like single-handed aiming like this, for example. But I'm not going to build anything like that into the system. You can watch my videos to understand how this stuff works. As you can see, I'm doing that dynamic additive overlay over the entire body and that allows me to add more motion back into it so it looks less stiff now, as you guys can see. Uh, so I did end up making it stiffer to fix the desynchronization between the torso and the arms. Uh, and this allowed me to make it less stiff, kind of like what we had it before. So the downside uh, to this is that you can only apply this at a very low percent. So if you go into the layering, and that'll be under the linked enum layer, so this will give me a chance to show you guys where that is now. So I moved it out of the blueprints uh, action data uh, data folder. Those folders that were under here, I moved those over here, and I put these under separate folders. And then under this overlay folder, you'll you'll find this stuff. And if you open this now, you'll see a, an extra one down here. And by default, the default value of it will be mesh space and 0.1, 10%. That's what I found to be the best value. If you turn this up too high, uh, you'll see, let's see, which one is this? Uh, let me do it to one of the moving ones. So let's see, the rifle overlay aiming, running aiming. So I'll increase this to 0.5% so that you can see what happens. So if you apply this too much, you'll see that his hands start moving a lot. That's kind of unavoidable uh, because of the way that we're overlaying this. So I would recommend keeping it low. If you do want it higher, uh, you could create uh, you, you wouldn't easily be able to fix this for this guy, uh, but for the live retargeted characters, you could offset their arms, their aiming down 
so that they're aiming, uh, so that they're holding the gun further down so that it doesn't rise above the shoulders. And then it'll just rise and fall like this. Uh, so you could do that with the live retargeting settings. But in order to do that right here, I would have to build in a system uh, that uses two bone IK on both arms at all times. And right now I kind of got it set up so that so that we only apply it as so that we only apply the two bone IK on the hand that needs it. In this case, because it's a two handed weapon, we actually only need that on the left hand. So there's no point in doing two two bone IKs when you only actually need one. You could though add an effector offset right here that lowers it, like what I was talking about how you can do on the live retargeted characters. But, you know, I think it looks fine if we just keep that value low. It adds plenty of motion back into it without causing too many problems, as you can see. And you can experiment with the different modes as well. That's why I added this in here. Rather than just uh, having it static, you'll see it moves a little bit differently whenever we have it in local. It's moving more towards the face rather than up and down. Uh, if you turn that up too high, you'll probably get a similar result, except it'll be going inside the face. Yeah, see? So that's why I suggest keeping it low. 10% seems to be fine. You might be able to get away with 15%, but I want an advice turning it up too high. Just like whenever you're doing copy motion stuff, you don't want to turn it up too high. Uh, also, yeah, whenever you're in uh, non-strafing mode uh, and you're looking at the character and you're turning, the gun does jitter. That's the aim offset because the calculation I'm doing is mostly designed for like uh, this perspective. You can fix that though. You would just have to... Uh, uh, maybe handle the aim offset calculation differently. So that covers the changes. Let me just go ahead and show you how this works in here. So nothing much has really changed in here. That still works the s same way. I, st I still have the yaw aim offset right here, but in order to fix that wrapping problem, I had to move the pitch back over here. Uh, so applying the pitch right before the yaw or right after the yaw, in both cases, that caused problems. I had to do it post layering, unfortunately, which also means that your layering settings will determine like how the character bends. So right now I have this in base, but then I have this partially in overlay, which stiffens it. I'll show you on the guns. I think I handled it a little differently. So it's mesh space and overlay 75%. So the spine has to be an overlay about 75% in order to uh, make it look like he's bending over. If you don't, if you reduce that overlay any more than it is on the spine, then he will not bend over as much. And it could cause more problems where like when he's aiming down with the pistol, then... Uh, it may look funny, so just keep that in mind. So, yeah, so this is the, the new pitch. And like I said, I included 45 degrees in here as well. And it looks like it's for the rifle, but it's really not. That's just the preview that I have set up. If I, if you look at these 
you'll see how it works. So, uh, yeah, all I'm doing is I'm rotating the pelvis, each spine bone, and then I'm just rotating uh, the head and the arms by a specific angle. So for the 90, I can tell you that both for up and down, I did uh, 20, 20, 20, 30. Uh, on, the, on the chest control, I did 30. And then on the arms, I did 40. So that's a total of 90. Anyway, if y'all guys want me to do a video on how I made those, I may, I may do a video on it. Just let me know. So in the aim offset for the pitch, I have no smoothing because pitch doesn't need smoothing. It doesn't have that wrapping. So you, you're either, your camera normally stops when you're looking straight up. Uh, so which prevents, or when you're looking straight down, you can't look like back here. Uh, you can't like cycle back like this, make a full 360. It's normally clamped 180 degrees. So that prevents you from needing to wrap back around. Uh, as far as the yaw though, you can cycle all the way around. And so for that, I had to handle it. Um, well, I didn't actually have to handle it any differently. I just had to add a smooth, a smoothness to it. So you'll see here, I do have a version of this blend space approach for the yaw, but it does introduce jittering back in. And so I just stuck with the spine it would probably be more performance friendly uh, rather than doing all these transforms, uh, but it introduced jittering. So if you don't mind the jittering, then go for it. You can swap this out with the other one, but the performance gain will be negligible. So just so you know, it'll be negligible. If any, actually, I could be wrong. It might actually be more performance heavy. It depends on how these evaluate things. They may just only evaluate the single bone that you are modifying, in which case, if that's so, then it may be more performance friendly. Of course, I am doing this right here for the fingers, which may not even be necessary. You could probably bypass that. Uh, but yeah, so that pretty much covers it. Let's see, what else did I do? Um, oh yeah, so linked uh, anim layers. So if you come in here now, you'll see that I have the base and then I have the default. If you open this up, I've set all the variables except these to private so that only these show up in here. And these are the poses. And so if you need to, you can duplicate this and replace those poses with your own pose, or maybe just only replace one, like uh, the, the aim poses, you know, or whatever, maybe the move moving ready pose. As far as the rifle, there's fewer poses for the rifle. So you'll see there's only three poses for the rifle logic. For this one, you would only have to replace the aiming pose. And that's because I swapped these out right here. So the way I did this is we're no longer, these are by frame. Uh, I just set it to by frame, but yeah, so you could use explicit time or by frame. I just chose to do by frame. That's just my own personal preference. Uh, these are step animations anyway. They're just single poses. You won't be able to use pose compilations anymore. You'll have to extract the poses. And that's actually not difficult. If I just go in here, I can go to create asset, create animation, and current pose. That's how you extract it. So... 
I, I'm getting away from those post compilations because they're kind of redundant. We don't actually need them in this project. I was only using them because I was kind of like borrowing some of the ALS's poses. 